Okay, ready, lady? Yeah, we got some. It's we time got some for new products. products. New products. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. New, new, new. Okay. New, new, new. New, 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 new. Okay, so um, we have other products, but these are. Uh, we almost made these the uh, star of the show. These are Besides super cool. Up, so there's a bunch of different colors of these. Okay. And um, my favorite color, of course, black, but um, this is sil silicone wire. This is silicone coated 30 gauge wire. Yeah. And um, this is my favorite wire. And yeah. uh, it comes in these adorable little spools. It's 50 feet per, um, but it's got like, you know, kind of a standard spool size, but they're a little thimbly um, spools of wire. And what's really nice about them is um, one, they're incredibly flexible and they're much more flexible than PVC coated wire, which tends to like crack a little bit. So these are very flexible and dynamic. And when you solder them, um, they solder very well, the silicone coating doesn't shrink away. And that's really useful because like you can cut the exact right length of wire. You don't have to like, you know, add two or three millimeters. And then if you cut and strip it, you know, you have to keep cutting and stripping it to get a short um, amount of exposed wire because they, when you solder it, it doesn't, it doesn't burn, melt. It, you can you know, hold this against a soldering iron and it won't damage the coating. So especially when you're soldering wearables or um, small projects where you have to get in there and like there's a wire harness and you don't want to worry about damaging it, uh, these wires are amazing. And uh, so I love them and they come in a bunch of different colors. We have them. What projects would you use them on? Like, um, give examples. The best projects that we've used them on are um, like Noah and Pedro's projects where they cram a lot of small electronics into a 3D print. So there's like a lot of, you know, they have to thread the wire around maybe, or uh, wearable projects where like the sparkle skirt used it. Um, our, second, our second version of the sparkle skirt used it because um, it was flexible enough that you could sew it onto the fabric and it didn't bind the fabric a lot. It was, it was nice and flexible. And um, what else is it good for? I use it a lot for prototyping. I use it for, because it's 30 gauge, it's very thin. It's great for when you have a PCB and you have to do like a blue wire hack. I find this is a lot nicer to use than Kynar coated wire, the, that blue wire, um, because it's a more flexible, it's not stiff and it won't crack off as okay. easily. It'll, it'll flex at the joint. So this is All my right. go-to wire. Okay. Yeah, it's everywhere around. And we already carried it in uh, two foot lengths or two, 10 foot lengths or something. Okay. Uh, six foot, but people really wanted more. So now we have the big spool. Is that maker paste? It's time for maker paste. We've grown up makers and we made them No, paste this is the little, this paste. is the little, um, can, oh, can you sh quickly just show the, the video? Cause it's exactly the same stuff. So or no. this tube, this tube has this stuff in it. This is the same stuff, but let's say you don't want to have a gigantic Tupperware full of it. You just want a little bit. You so just want a little tube of it. This paste is great for when you're doing uh, surface mount soldering, and you you know you don't you want to like put the paste down on all the pads, and you can heat it with your soldering iron or with a hot air gun, especially if you're dealing with um, BGA components, QFNs, or um, you know MLFs, any chips where the the pads are underneath. It's very hard to get to. Sometimes if they, if they come out on the edge, you can solder on the edge, but if they don't, they're underneath. And some of the newest sensors, the pads are only on the bottom. Even the newest modules, like cellular modules, the pads are only on the bottom. So you put down paste, you put the module on top, and then you heat the whole thing with hot air, or maybe a skillet or a toaster oven. So this is a small amount and it's formulated so you don't have to refrigerate it really. It works without. Nice. You cut the tip off and it you know, has a little dispenser. You don't need a syringe. So it's, it saves you a lot of money and effort. You just have this and you're pretty much ready to go. Good okay. for beginning surface mount. I have one of these at home. You know, I don't do a lot of surface mount at home. So when I need it, I pull it out, yeah. squeeze a little paste down and then it works perfectly. It's from Amtec, which is the paste that uh, we've used for years. The Amtec uh, LF40, it's similar to the LF4300. It's a great paste. Okay. Lead free. All right, free. next up, um, we have an update to a pack, a kit, and more. Yeah, this is the Pi 3 starter kit without the Pi 3. We had um, we had updated the other kit for the Pi 3, but then we actually kind of forgot to do this one. But uh, whatever, no, not a problem. We just did it today. So if you already have a Pi 3, this is similar to our other starter kits without um, Pi, except of course it doesn't include the Wi-Fi module. So it's a little it's a little less expensive as well. You don't need the Wi-Fi module because the Pi 3 has one built yeah. in. Okay. Yay. Yep. Next up. Joystick. 
This is a, you know, it's called like a PSP joystick, but I'm not exactly sure which PSP it was used in. Maybe like the PSP like 1000V. It's a style. Um, it's a very low cost little thumbstick. It has through hole pads, which I kind of dig. And uh, it's just a little simple XY thumbstick. The other ones we have have little cables. This one is the only one that mounts directly onto a PCB, which means that if you have a breakout board, you can use it very easily uh, and very securely in a breadboard. Yeah. Okay. And now you're probably wondering, well, what where would you ever do with something like this? You well, you get the joystick breakout that we made. Little simple breakout and uh, solder it all together. And then you can put it on a breadboard. I can show it off. Also, I have that demo here. So this little thumbstick, it's, it's self-centering and it's analog. So it's two potentiometers. And uh, you know, as you move it around, it'll self-center, but um, it's just kind of fun, very easy, very intuitive. A lot of people understand that this is a joystick without needing the gigantic you know, clicker or anything. So I kind of like this. I think they'll, when we do projects that do arcade or video gamey type stuff, yeah. we'll, um, we'll probably use this little joystick, especially the breakout board. I made it you know, with two strips of header, so it's very secure. Okay. Simple, but and, effective. And that was the, the star of the show tonight. Yeah. Besides, even though the silicone wire was, it was a close. I know, but this is a custom yeah. one, but cute little joystick. Right. And that, Lady Ada, was, you guessed it, new products. Dun, da, da.